This is another episode of Stand Up Comedy, your host and MC, celebrating 40 plus years on the fringe of show business. Stories, interviews, and comedy sets from the famous and not so famous. Here's your host and MC, Scott Edwards. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's show, and I've titled it Three of the Best, and there's going to be no doubt about that. Closing the show, coming up later on, recorded back in 1980 in my original room in Old Sacramento. That was a converted banquet room in a restaurant. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Seinfeld. That's right. He's went on to fame and fortune with the Seinfeld show and lots of TV specials. Very, very funny guy. If you haven't heard of him, uh, you're not from this planet. (laughs) And in the featured position, our second of the three of the best, Very talented comic. We were one of the first rooms he worked when he came over from his home country of Russia. That's right. It's famous Russian comic Yakov Smirnov. Very talented guy. I know you'll enjoy his comedy. In this set, he was actually the opening act for Jerry Seinfeld back in 1980. So those two worked together, and I'll tell you why a little bit later. And right now, to kick things off, three of the best includes amazing opening act, He is uh, one of the stars of Saturday Night Live. He's done a couple movies. In fact, he's got his own podcast that's doing very well right now. That's right. It's my good friend, Dana Carvey. He's done uh, musical comedy, impressions, and just a terrific stand-up comic. So this set that we're going to listen to right now was recorded in 1983, so a few years after the later recordings, and It's really funny stuff. It's from a headlining set. It's just a portion, but I know you'll enjoy it. So sit back and enjoy some tremendous stand-up comedy by the one and only Dana Carvey. Welcome to the show. The fault fish is moving there. (laughs) I'm going English and French. I don't know. (laughs) Swedish people making love. Sure, dip, sure, dip, sure, dip, sure, dip, sure, dip. Anyway. (laughs) Sure, fat fish. This show's gotten completely out of hand. I would be pissed. Oh, well, let's all get naked and order waffles. What do you say? Can we have a couple hundred waffles from the kitchen? E.T. gets his phone bill. Ouch. The five fish. The five fish. <laughs> the mouth fish moves in. The five fish. Oh, I touched it and I have herpes. I'm sorry. and say, I got herpes. <laughs> British people can't even understand each other they're making love. Say, I said, I lot of fat you. I lot of fat you. I got me bite. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> beat me, whip me. <laughs> anyway, the bad fish. Back. And now a word from Jacques Cousteau. The bad fish. When we left it last, we was heading south, looking for a tobacco plant to meet with. The pipefish moving in the sea, the female pipefish moving around. Never before have I seen such a hot pipefish situation. For pipefish buddocks moving in the sea. <laughs> Get out of the water, Philippe, you horny Frenchman, you. <laughs> Papa, I couldn't help it, they make me horny. <laughs> anyway, they move in there. The pipefish, there is an ending, I'm sure, somewhere. The pipe fish moves around, moves around slowly, slowly, attracting her mate, waving her tail like this. As if to say to a prospective mate, no in town, buy you a drink. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, just uh, stick that in your mouth and suck on it, okay? <laughs> right, my dad smoked a pipe, always made me <laughs> fill the pipe, you know. I open with that. This is something funny, but I won't say it. Um, <laughs> Remember your dad would fill the pipe and he'd ask you to hold the wheel and you're like five and it was really intense on an icy road at night with lots of turns, you know? And you go over the side and everyone would go to the hospital. Remember that? And that happened? Do you remember that? Apparently not. Okay. Oh, stop it! No! Oh! Gotta watch out for these. I like the guys at the high school with the metal detector. Ooh. Don't laugh, I found a dollar last weekend. Ooh. Oh, look, there's some dog poop. <laughs> what 
the hell is this on the stage? A rubber for a midget? What is this? What is that? Who put this here? Who put this here? No, I'm gonna have an answer. And maybe you ought to go to your room. When you're ready to be with others, you can come on out. I have had it up to you. Oh, it was, it was Clancy. It, what? The, the male by fish, most of the sea. This is a nice audience. Hey, do something with that, like about a fish thing. The, the balloon fish waves in the sea. Frantically waving its balloon like shape. The male balloon fish must sin. Blow on me, I will get bigger. <laughs> Oh my God, what have we got here? This doesn't... The kitchen's still open if you want to order. You can get some of this hot sauce and spill it all over your date there for a dollar and a half. Ooh, these don't look too good after this. The flying chip fish wave of the sea. The hot sauce fish mousse and spreading its spam. I've never been this dirty, I'm very sorry. Feel the back going, what's he doing? I can't hear him. What was that? Hot sauce, what'd he say? Drop. There probably is a lady right now going, I still don't understand the pipe thing. That just, what was that pipe fish? I mean, it wasn't a fish, he's just holding a pipe up. I don't understand it. It was a pipe. The whole time it was a pipe. The whole thing pisses me off, I don't know why. Well, I'm kind of wrapped up like this, I don't know what to do. Yeah, so I, I have a pretty good life so far. I don't know what I would change. You know, do you ever feel like you just want to affect the world? Just like have things react to you? Like walk down the street, someone asks you what time it is, and you go, well, it's pretty late. <laughs> you know? Walk into a 7-Eleven, walk up the guy with the white coat on, you're the frozen foods, give him this look. Excuse me. Could you tell me where the frozen fish is, please? You guys say, I'm British, I have a pipe. I don't know where the fish is. That's all. The other one to do is hang outside a beauty salon. <laughs> Your beauty salon. Because <laughs> you know when people do get their hair, you feel kind of insecure. You don't think it looks good. You hang out all day. What's your name? Ron? You've been picked on twice tonight. I apologize for that. You've been a good sport about it. Give me five. Run on. I love you, man. He's heterosexual. You're going, oh, another man said he loved him. Real weird. Is it hard to tell people you love him? Is that kind of a trip? Apparently it is. Shut up. He's talking about love. I can take the dick jokes, but not love. Don't you talk about human feelings. You know what it's like when your friend gets drunk and he tells you and you're not drunk so it doesn't seem right and you're just like, hey, I love you, man. <laughs> Shut up. I don't want to get heavy now, okay? I want to eat my Cheetos and my Dr. Pib and get out of here, all right? I know, but I love you. <laughs> Same guy, you put an ad in for a roommate, he shows up, doesn't move his mouth, little knock on the door. Excuse me, uh, did you put an ad in for a roommate? Uh, no. Well, like, could I just live here? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a sandbox outside. You want to hang out there for a while? Sandbox, right on. <laughs> what you do is you hang out Ron's beauty salon. People come out looking very insecure with their new hairdo. You don't know them. You walk up to them, point at their hair and go, That's too bad. Also, shampoo. What kind of shampoo do you sell at your store? Nexus? I am tired of shampoo that describes what kind of hair it's for on the bottle. They rip you up. Usually it's Euromac, you know. You go, you go buy the shampoo, everyone's looking. The guy says, can we have a price check on the shampoo for dry, brittle, frizzy, rat-infested, greasy, crappy-looking hair here? Right? It's not for me, it's for my dog, man. I saw one for sensitive hair. Do you sell shampoo for sensitive hair? What the hell is sensitive hair? Well, don't shampoo me today. How about just a cream rinse? I'm sensitive. When makes hair behave, you know. Hey, man, I'm not going to behave. I'm going to do whatever I want. Stand up on end. Come on, behave. <clears throat> makes hair behave. You're very lovely. Need you. Want you. So many ways. 
and just teasing. You know, a lot of sexual energy comes out of being on stage. You know, I'm not totally responsible for everything I do up here because, you know, I mean, do you guys do things you don't mean in life? Like you go to the post office, the guy says, you know, you can I buy some stamps? And, and the guy says, okay, and you go, fuck you. <laughs> And the guy goes, why'd you flip me off? And he goes, spasm, sorry. I slept horribly last night. Whoa, sorry. That hurts like a son of a wall. <laughs> this one I did the other day. I went to McDonald's, ordered all this food, came to the table, and I said, um, I'm not going to pay. <laughs> hey, come back, man. The best one, the best one is to go to a bakery where they have the pastry behind the glass. This is very simple, but lots of fun. When it comes to your turn to order, point at the glazed donuts and order three chocolate eclairs. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll have three chocolate eclairs. <laughs> right over here. <laughs> Little to the left. Chocolate eclairs. The guy says, Kitty guitar, kitty guitar. These are no chocolate eclairs. These are glazed donut, glazed donut. Now, do you ever accidentally mimic someone with a foreign accent? Does that embarrass you when you do it? I do it. You don't mean it, but you go, no, I want to reclaim. Right? The guy's face gets all red. You make fun of the way I talk. Damn God you. You bitch up son you. People get hostile like that, don't they? I'm in a laundromat the other day. I asked this guy where the detergent machine was. He thought I was trying to hassle him. I just said, where is it? And he goes, hey, hey, look at me. Am I your goddamn mommy? Huh? Am I your mommy? Every time you got a goddamn question, you're going to come to me, pal? I don't like getting hassled. You know what I mean? Huh? Huh? I just got my hair cut at Ron's and I'm pissed off, all right? <laughs> so I looked at him and said, thanks for sharing. Thank you. Did you put an ad in for a remit? Yeah, I just had a six-pack of butt. I love you, man. <laughs> yeah. Same line. I love people who will tell you their life story that you don't know. You know these people, you meet them in the elevators, wherever. Same laundry man, same day, this woman walks up to me. I said hi, expect hi back. And she goes, oh hi, how you doing? You know, my name's Sue. Do you like the name Sue? I like it, I don't know. Do you think I'm fat? Maybe I should lose some weight. Do you think I should? Maybe I'll cut my hair, maybe I'll permit. I don't know, I'll see what Ron says. I don't know what I'll do. I don't know. You know, my boyfriend, see, he's so cute. He's got herpes, he sells cocaine. I like him a lot. I don't know why. Oh, I met this cute guy, Greg. Do you think I should marry him? I like the name Greg. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even know her. I look at her and go, hey, hey, what? Am I your goddamn mommy? <laughs> huh? Every time you got the goddamn question, come to me. Do you ever get intimidated when you get caught singing in the car? <laughs> and you stop singing? I do it. You're having a good time. Stop me up. Never stop. Never stop. You look over, a guy's looking at you. Pretend you're yawning. <laughs> Just yawning, man. <laughs> Follow him for half a mile, pull his car over and go, I was yawning, you son of a bitch. I was not singing. <laughs> you look at his haircut and go, that's too bad. <laughs> you can get killed in the car when you're driving. You ask the passenger in the seat next to you to look out the window and see if it's clear to switch lanes. And you need a specific response, but you don't always get it in life. And it's like, hey, is it clear? And they go, uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you supposed to do with that information? We're lucky we don't have people like that working at the airport, you know? Be like, uh, this is a United 101. Is that uh, clear to take off over? Uh, yeah. It looks pretty good. Go ahead. You'll probably make it. Yeah. The worst one in the car has to be, hands down. Hey, is it clear? Go now, go now! <laughs> That'll shorten your life, huh? <laughs> or if you have a friend who smokes too much pot, is it clear? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Dana's always one of the best when it comes to stand-up comedy. He could just go on forever and ever. Very funny. Uh, his impressions, his voice dialects, his humor was always uh, well-received, and he was so good with the audience, always a lot of audience participation. I'm sure you enjoyed that set. And that was from 1983. One of the things I wanted to mention that this podcast and this particular show proves is that even though it's been over 30 years, 
the comedy still stands. I think it's still as funny today as it was then, and I hope you agree. Anyway, let's keep this moving right along. Three of the best, our second act, was actually the opening act back in 1980 for Jerry Seinfeld. He was a Russian comic. He had come over from Russia where he had been a comic uh, working cruise ships on the Black Sea. When he got to America, he was barely able to understand and speak English, but Laughs Unlimited was one of the first clubs he worked. He was a terrific guy to have on stage. He would sing songs. He would do Russian dances. But right now, I'm going to share some of his original stand-up comedy from back in 1980 when he was the opening act. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the comedy of famous Russian comic Yakov Smirnov. We hope everybody's as comfortable as possible. It's, it's always uh, a new and exciting experience on a Saturday night when we get a full house. Bear with us a little bit. We are new. This is only our fifth week, getting into our fifth week here at Laughs Unlimited. And um, we have some fantastic waitress service. I know you don't believe it. But they are here, and they're out there amongst you somewhere, and they will get to you as soon as possible. But in the meantime, we'll entertain you with the best, top-quality entertainment available. Let me say, first of all, welcome to Laughs Unlimited. This is Sacramento's only all-comedy showroom. Thank you. It wasn't easy to bring it here, but it's here. We're bringing in three top comics each and every week. We have a new show starting every Tuesday, and if uh, the, the future's going to be just like the past, which has been fantastic. We've had some real excellent shows, and you people are real lucky because we have a real special one this week. Right now, I think we'll get on with the show. Hey, get off the stage. Just, just a real quick question. How many here, by applause, is this your first time here? Okay. How many this is your last time here? Okay. Well, the majority is still with us. Let's keep them going. Right now, I've got a, such a talent for you. Our first, our first comic is from Russia. You're going, ugh, how could he be funny? But no, this guy's great. In fact, he's, he's booked next week in Afghanistan for the soldiers. So <laughs> he's a lot of fun. If you would like to read up on him, uh, he was just featured in this month's We Magazine. No, 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 he's not the foldout. No, he's, he's, he's written up in the back section. You got to look out for that. He is, uh, he is, he just got here from Russia. He's been playing all the comedy stores down in Southern California. He was on the Make Me Laugh TV show. Let's have a big round of applause for Yakov Smirnov. Hi. <laughs> My name is Yakov Smirnov. I'm, I'm a comedian from Russia. I know what you're saying. Oh, no, not another Russian comedian. <laughs> Yakov Smirnov is not my real name. It's my stage name. My real name is Johnny. <laughs> Johnny Walker. <laughs> Johnny Walker Red. <laughs> I, I didn't defect from Russia. They asked me to leave. I like America because here, here you have freedom of speech. You can go even to President Carter and you can say, I don't like Carter. We can do the same thing in Russia. We can go to Brezhnev and we can say, I don't like Carter. <laughs> it's, a, it's the first year I'm watching the election campaign in America. That's a lot of fun. You see, in Russia we also have two political parties, the living and the dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, election day, you walk into the room, there are two boxes. You put ballot yes in one box, or they put you in the other. <laughs> it's no problem up there. Yeah. I'll tell you, food, food is interesting in Russia. The most popular food in Russia is a bread sandwich. It's bread and bread. <laughs> you have the same food here, it's called Big Mac. <laughs> Same thing. I, I should make fun about American food, but sometimes I get a little bit homesick because nothing is better than real homemade Russian bread made from real Kansas wheat. <laughs> nothing is better than that. Oh. After the grain embargo, 
um, you you got more Wonder Bread here. And Russian people wonder, where is bread? <laughs> well, they don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'll tell. You, I don't want you to think that everything is so bad in Russia. No, Siberia is a fun place. <laughs> Siberia, Siberia has the world fastest dogs. Because in Siberia, trees are two hundred miles apart. <laughs> so you have to be fast. And so. American people also have a wrong impression about Russian girls. Russian girls are pretty. They have tall legs and nice breasts and nice faces, but then they grow up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They do. <laughs> you should see a Russian woman. At 20, she looks 40. 40, she looks 60. 60, <laughs> don't look. <laughs> yeah, we don't have prostitution in Russia. <laughs> Russian women have trouble giving it away. <laughs> You should, yeah, I, I, we had international exhibition in Moscow. It was exhibition of women's underwear. I went there just for fun, not to buy it. And there was sale. The first came French woman and she asked for seven pair of underwear. I didn't speak any French, but I kind of explained to her, why do you need seven pair? She said, what do you mean why? It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Every day is different. I need different pair. Next was American woman. She asked for five pair. I said, why do you need five? She said, what do you mean, why? It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But Saturday and Sunday, I don't need it. <laughs> because my husband is home. And next was Russian woman. Yeah, next was Russian woman. She asked for 12 pair. I said, why do you need 12? She said, what do you mean, why? It's uh, January? <laughs> Are you bachelorette party? Are you, who is the, are you the one? Are they saying goodbye to you or what? Uh, what are you wearing up there? It's little tits from the balloon. God. Oh, I'll tell you. I don't know. I, I don't know. But uh, you see, uh, what I wanted to tell you, they, they promise, generally they promise by year 1990, everyone in Russia is going to have a car. By year 2000, gasoline. <laughs> looks good. Yeah, looks good. I just recently bought my first American car, a Toyota. <laughs> it's a nice car. I like it. It brings you problems sometimes. Like I drove to San Diego two weeks ago, and the light when it says oil, it went on. So I realized I don't have any oil. I have a leak in the car. I stopped by the drugstore, and I said, what can stop the leak? And they said, preparation age. <laughs> I put it in and it worked. <laughs> but the tail pipe shrunk. <laughs> and then and, and then I st I stopped by by Camp Pendleton. I have a friend of mine who works there as a spy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He got fired. Now she works at 7-Eleven <laughs> as a Twinkie. <laughs> and then as closer I come to San Diego, the station on my radio changed to KGB. <laughs> Who doesn't know what's KGB? It's Russian secret police. And it's a station in San Diego, KGB. I turned the radio on and they said, it's KGB FM. It's 10 o'clock. We know where you are. <laughs> Almost crashed into the car in front of me. <laughs> People come to me after the show normally and they say, are you really from Russia? After I talk for half an hour with this accent. <laughs> and then they say, are you really a comedian? <laughs> You see, American people can't picture Russian comedian. Things are different now. They even run the contest on the best political joke. First prize, 20 years. <laughs> Should be a good joke. <laughs> yeah. We can't tell jokes about politics. We can't tell jokes about government. We can't tell jokes about sex. We don't have sex in Russia. I was born by chance. <laughs> I'm glad to be in this country where sex is for asking. 
May doctor lady for a second. May I please have some sex? Please. How about you, sir? Yeah, hi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! Do you know anyone? I'm just saying. No. <laughs> yep. 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 I'm saying. <laughs> They're laughing. You see, I'm saying the word "yep," and for you it means like "yes," and uh, in Russian, <laughs> in Russian it means uh, intercourse. <laughs> That's true. Who speaks Russian probably would know. Yeah. It means in the, I came to America and I was just hearing yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh, you see, you see, in Russia, in Russia it's different. You see, in Russia, picture of mother breastfeeding a child is considering dirty, especially when child is over 16. <laughs> but still, it's kind of. I remember I was a little kid. I came to my father and I said, "Pop, what's hanging in between elephant's legs?" My father looked at me and he said, "The tail, the trunk." I said, "What else?" He said, "Hell knows what." I came to my mother with the same question. She said. The tail, the trunk. I said, what else? She said, whatever supposed to. I said, but my father said, hell knows what. She said, it's your father has hell knows what. <laughs> Elephant has what's supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> that was Yakov Smirnov live on stage. And man, it was always a treat to have him at the club. If you weren't aware, he's still doing comedy. He has his own theater in Branson, Missouri. He also went on to get a PhD and travels all over the world sharing his knowledge and his humor. And it's just been a great honor. In fact, there's a terrific interview of Yakov earlier in this podcast series. So be sure to check it out. And he had a very distinctive laugh back in 1980, kind of a honking laugh. And I'm mentioning that because as we get into the Jerry Seinfeld set, You'll hear Yakov in the background laughing. It's hilarious. But these two guys were a terrific team to have at our club. And again, this is in the original room back in 1980. And I think the comedy is just as funny today. And of course, he's famous for his own show, Seinfeld. But he's been on lots of TV specials, lots of talk shows. He has his own podcast, his own driving and a cup of coffee, something like that. He's very funny and was one of the original acts that worked out a lot of his material at Laughs Unlimited before he went on to fame and fortune. It was always great to work with him, and he's a really nice guy. But let's hear some of his comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, live on my stage from 1980, Jerry Seinfeld. Tonight, we have something very special for you. Our headliner this, our headliner this evening is a very talented young man. He started off in New York. He was uh, with, <laughs> not Catcher in the Rye, it's Catch a Rising Star Improv Group in New York. And he got his start there. He was doing very well. He moved out to Hollywood, played all the major comedy stores out there. Um, you've seen him on lots of talk shows, and he just recently signed the contract. You will see him this fall on ABC's Benson Series. Let's have a big round of applause for Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, we're fine. Well, good. Yes. We heard enough from you already. Okay. <laughs> well, wow, this is great. Welcome to Sacramento's only comedy showroom. Is that what you call it? The showroom, Scott? Yeah. Sounds like you come and you pick out a comedian. No, I'll take that one there. It's like a car showroom. They have them on display and you can buy them. We're not on display. Hey, hey, how are you? <laughs> this is fun. I love comedy. <laughs> How many of you have heard jokes before? <laughs> I have some idea what's happening. Are you yeah. <laughs> you just had a little too much to drink. You'll be okay. So, uh, <laughs> security table three, please. You want to take care of that? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to what people have been calling it Old Sack. Old Sack. It's kind of a, I think we can come up with a better name. Don't you think? Old Sack. Sounds like kind of an old bag. Old Sack. You're writing down jokes. That's good. 
<laughs> so I'm new out here. So I'm trying to catch on. I'm trying to get hip. I'm not that hip. Uh, they took me on one of these uh, water slide rides last week down in uh, Los Angeles. That's where I'm living. And have you ever been on one of these things where you climb up to the top and the, it's like a water slide? It's a big spiral and you slide down and the water is kind of rushing around. It's kind of like being flushed down a giant toilet is what it <laughs> felt like. I, mean, I walked out. The guy said, how'd you like the ride? I said, I felt like a piece of shit. <laughs> We're doing some remodeling over here in the back, <laughs> pulling up some of those rusty nails. We'll have that finished before. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I grew up in Massapequa, Long Island. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a nice place to live. And uh, it's nice. I feel much better being an adult. You can eat what you want. When you're a kid, you have to eat what your parents give you. My mother used to disguise food on me. Never works. Look, Mom, I know it's liver. I don't know how you got it to look like Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> you did some good work there, but you didn't get past me. I used to eat a lot of cold cereal. Remember those uh, those weird recipes they always have on the side of the box, cold cereal? Anybody ever get their mother to make cornflakes Cantonese? <laughs> what was that stuff? Strange ideas they had there. Yeah. So anyway, what are you smoking there? Benson and Hedges. Those are uh, plain cigarettes, they're not the lights? Some of them are light, some of them are plain. Well, it's a blend there, huh? You don't get those two. I like these new light cigarettes, the new trend towards light cigarettes, because the thinking is, advertising-wise, it's light. Take it easy. Smoke a pack, smoke a carton, smoke 10,000, it's light. <laughs> they never give a cigarette a name like Dead Weight. <laughs> you know, that stops your cold. Do you know which cigarette is the lowest toss cigarette? Which brand? Carlton. Carlton is the lowest. I checked into Carlton. Less tar than breathing regular air? <laughs> That's really low. I, I, if you don't smoke them, you risk lung disease. <laughs> Filters of solid wood. How about camels? Any men smoking camels? you got to be pretty tough to smoke a camel. Camels are very high tar, roughly the equivalent of smoking an actual camel. <laughs> You've got to knock them down, roll them up in the papers. It's very hard. <laughs> How about Raleigh's? People always remember Raleigh's because they had valuable Raleigh coupons. <laughs> Were these valuable coupons? They were worthless. <laughs> really? You could lose a lung trying to get a badminton set. <laughs> Even if you get it, you can't play. <laughs> Your lungs are shot. <laughs> Point. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll smoke a few more packs, we'll get a new birdie, come on. <laughs> I like playing games, I eh? It's kind of funny walking underneath this thing. What, uh, well, so what games are popular here in uh, Old Sack? Bowling? Bowling popular? I would think so, huh? No? You don't bowl? I love to bowl. Any bowlers? Yeah, sure. You got your own shoes? Oh, that's a status number there. You got your own shoes. I hate when you have to pick the ball out of that rack. You know that giant rack they have to find the ball? It's very hard to find one that fits, isn't it? There's some very strange hole patterns in some of these balls. I don't think I want to meet the people that can use some of these balls. <laughs> you ever see like eight holes in them? One Three in a row sometimes? Weird things. Just... Sometimes there's those giant holes. You, I, they're so big, those holes. I can't even try it out. I bring it back to my seat, use it to hold the Cokes. <laughs> They're big. Or I put it on my head, I run down the lane by myself. <coughs> I always wanted to come back on that little return lane and pop out the top. How did I do, strike? <laughs> come out of that little plastic thing. <laughs> yeah, bowling. What are the games? Uh, volleyball? We used to play that in high school. You like volleyball? Volleyball was great. It had this whole concept of rotate. Remember this idea? Everybody rotates. Everybody moves around. Everybody plays every position. You play the front, you play the back, you get the serve. It's totally fair. We would have put rotate right into regular society. Millionaires, rotate. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a good idea. Millionaires don't like to rotate. See, there's rules to society. You can't just do what you want. You walk out on the street, you want to ask a stranger what time it is. There's certain places on the person's body that you can tap them. 
You can tap somebody on the shoulder, that's okay. You cannot tap somebody on the face. <laughs> this has already been decided. You don't walk up to somebody you don't know and go, excuse me, can you help me out? <laughs> Buddy? Pal, I'd like to get some help here if I could. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. Rules everywhere. Rules. I opened a new bank. So many rules just to get a checking account started. I opened an account at Bank of America down in uh, Hollywood there. You know that bank? Boy, every time I mention Bank of America, people boo. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Just wanted to keep that consistent. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad service, isn't it? Is that... People say the service, it really is bad because I went in there, you know, these glass partitions they have between you and the teller, they don't even have a little hole for you to talk through. I need money! I'm hungry! You can't, the service is very bad. So they try and give you little bullshit things to help you think you're getting good service. They give you checks with the pictures on them, little boats and shit and things. What the hell is that? I don't need that. <laughs> they gave me the sports scenes on the checks. You know that, where they put the people golfing on the check, people are skiing, having a great time. I'm writing out checks, I'm not having a great time. I'd like to see bums and dead people. <laughs> I can look at them and think, well, at least I got a couple of bucks. <laughs> Doing better than this poor slob, anyway. <laughs> Well, you call up the bank or you call up a big company and they've all got the same systems to keep you down, to keep you demoralized when you're trying to get help. Master charge. Every time I call them, they put you on hold with the music. A lot of companies have this now. Hold with music. You know that one? Where you call up and the music is playing. They put you on hold. And they figure, he's got the music. We can leave him on there. <laughs> Operator left me on there 20 minutes. By the time she came back, I couldn't even remember what I wanted. <laughs> she says, can I help you, please? I said, yeah. I'd like to hear the rest of that Johnny Mathis album. <laughs> you got me into it. Let's hear the other side. I may want to get it. You like that one, huh? <laughs> well, that's a good one. Well, keep track of that, and uh, at the end of the night, you can shove it. So, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, so what else is happening? Well, I've been living out here. I've been going around, and we got the marina in. You drive. We I haven't had a car around here, but I like driving. That's one of my favorite things to do. I love driving around. But you got to watch these intersections these days. You know what I mean? Because every lane in a big intersection now has its own thing, and you got to know what's what it's up to. You know what I mean? It's like no right turn, no U-turn, no left turn. Left turn only, no U-turn, right turn. I like when you pull into the middle lane, and it says left turn, okay. A little personal touch there. <laughs> Don't you think it's like it's like they're saying to you, left turn, okay. <laughs> We're not crazy about you making the left. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Just make it and get it over with. I've seen better, believe me. <laughs> but they're involved. A little involvement, left turn, okay. I like that. I want them to get more involved. Have signs like right turn. Why not? I could loosen up a little bit. You turn, enjoy it. Make that Yui. <laughs> you know you want to do it. <laughs> and you're thinking, you know, I do feel like making a Yui here. <laughs> I wasn't even going that way. <laughs> you drive along. A lot of times out here in California, you drive along, you're in the middle of the country. You could drive along and get stuck behind these horse trailers. I hate that. Does it have to be designed that way, the horse trailer? <laughs> Big ass right in my face. <laughs> What's the story here? The horses like it? What's happening? They're probably standing in the back talking. You feel a draft, Bill? I'm very uncomfortable back there. I don't, I don't mind telling you. <laughs> Where else you drive along? I was in Florida. Worst drivers in the world in the state of Florida. Old guys. Nice guys. Old guys. <laughs> Ever drive behind one of these guys whose head just about reaches the window ledge? <laughs> He's driving along like this. Just looking in the radio. <laughs> so 
somehow by the stations he can tell where he is. I don't know how he does it. He's got his left turn signal on from when he left the house that morning. Leaves it on all day. Figures he's making a left eventually. <laughs> Raining tomorrow? Put the wipers on today. When you're old, you gotta prepare. You can't wait. You gotta make life happen. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> yeah, I've been traveling. I've seen lots of interesting things. I was in Switzerland. What a country. Great country. I was skiing there. You know, the Swiss tell you about thermal heat. You gotta know about how to dress, you know. They tell you that 75% of your body heat is actually lost through the top of the head. I had a little trouble with this. To me, it sounds like you could go skiing naked if you got a good hat. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? <laughs> I watch these weather reports. You know, you got to watch the weather when you go skiing. And they always have weather reports are the same wherever you go in the country. Highs, lows, fronts, things. We have no idea what it is. Then they show you the satellite photo, my favorite. They show you the earth from 10,000 miles away. Can you tell if you should take a sweater or not from that shot? <laughs> Can anybody? Has that helped anybody? <laughs> oh, cloud mass over Ecuador. I better put on the thick socks today. I have no idea what that did, why they put that up. Do you know what I do if I want to know the weather? You know what you do? Watch Romper Room. It's really, it's very helpful. Romper Room lays it on the line, gang. If the little willy guy on the wall gets a raincoat, I know what's happening. <laughs> they make it very simple. Yeah. You know what else about Switzerland? 500 years without a war. This is impressive. Also, very lucky for the Swiss Army. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen that little Swiss army knife. It's not much of a weapon. Corkscrews, bottle openers mostly. They've had some great picnics, don't get me wrong. But, you know, somebody comes at you, what are you going to pull out, nail clippers? Come on, buddy, let's go. You get past me, the guy in back of me has got a spoon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Jerry Seinfeld live on my stage in the original banquet room that Laughs Unlimited started in back in 1980. Man, it was so much fun to get to work with him over the years. He's a terrific guy and went on to great fame and fortune. Well, that was it. That was our three of the best podcast for this week. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I think the comedy is amazing. And the fact that all three of these acts are still performing today just shows their talent and ability all these decades later. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been three of the best. Dana Carvey, Yakov Smirnoff, and Jerry Seinfeld. Thanks for listening. Be sure to tell your family and friends. And we'll see you next week for another great show. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Stand Up Comedy, your host and MC. For information on the show, merchandise, and our sponsors, or to send comments to Scott, visit our website at www.standupyourhostandmc.com. Look for more episodes soon and enjoy the world of stand-up comedy. Visit a comedy showroom near you.